If you're designing something for a client who doesn't have a robust visual identity, it can be frustrating. Perhaps you're designing a website, but all you've been given to work with is a logo. Or maybe you're designing the logo, but this time you want to build out a more complete brand identity design system. I'm going to share one of my recent client projects to show you a few approaches that you can take. Let's go. Hello friends, my name is Matt Brunton. I'm a designer from the north of England and I once heard Michael Beirut, who's one of the most celebrated logo identity designers on the planet, the Pentagram partner, say this, you should be able to cover up the logo and still know who the design is for. And that's what an identity system does. It means that through other visual elements, we can still recognize the brand. And I love building systems like that, not just designing logos, but building robust identity design systems that are almost like algorithms. And once you've designed the system, all the applications, all the other work kind of pops out on the other end of the machine. And I'm gonna take you through a recent project of mine to show you maybe some approaches you can take that will help build out a system beyond just designing a great logo. So this client is called Six Connections and Six Connections uses retail products to encourage purposeful conversations on mental health. Now, when the client came to me, they just had this concept of six degrees of separation. The idea that everyone in the world is connected through six relationships potentially. And so they wanted to change not the negative word separation, but the positive connections. And these guys work one step before professional services uh, to help people with their mental health, just promoting conversations, promoting mates chatting, and then they can pass on to relevant help when it's needed. So the symbol really kind of popped out. I explored lots of different directions, but this a uh, graphical representation of the idea of six connections, which we have here around this central uh, circle, which can represent a person and, and the connections around that. And we were careful to get the geometry right there. So it worked well in small and large sizes and it was proportional. Then develop a combination mark. So there's two skews of that and then a color scheme. And with the color scheme, we wanted to evoke the feeling, the, the, the right psychology that we wanted. So these guys didn't want to be another mental health charity. Now, mental health tends to be very calming, quite recessive, which I understand. We've got a lot of stressed out, anxious people. We, we want to <laughs> let them know that this is a supportive service. That's important. But because these guys are one step before, they're in the conversation in friends in the pub or the cafe or spending time with people over um, food and things like that, which you'll see in some of their products. They wanted to be a bit louder and a bit more optimistic and a bit more positive and talk about positive elements of mental health as well and celebrate connections. So we decided on yellow, a traditional color of optimism, blue, which is a complementary color, the opposite side of the color wheel, because uh, complementary schemes are quite high contrast and again, uh, give a more, a little bit of a louder feel. Um, they're not too laid back. And then we had orange as well. So it's almost like a spit, split complementary with the orange and the yellow, the other side of the blue. It's kind of an orangey red. And then again, that's quite loud, passionate. You wouldn't normally associate that with mental health, but we wanted to bring in a bit of that passion and life and celebration and relationship. So now we've got a symbol, a color scheme, a word mark. How can we take it further? There's lots of things we could add, but for a lot of quote unquote brands, you know, identity designs, people just have a logo in a certain color and that's it. So what can you do? So one thing we did was uh, the symbol tessellation to express the mission. So the idea was uh, six meaningful conversations happen and those six lead to each of those six more, each of those six more, et cetera. And I think it's after six iterations, it's like over 46,000 people. So the idea is it's like a movement. So the tessellation idea expresses that. And you can see that in some of these applications here. And we took that through onto the packaging for one of their retail products with biscuits. So the idea was you sit down, they also did some coffee, you sit down, you have a cup of tea or coffee and share a biscuit with somebody and have a chat. That's the concept. So we subtly reference that by we have the symbol here in white and but then the symbol is in this tessellation pattern repeats. So it expresses this idea 
that the movement can go on and on and on in this sort of infinite idea. And we've just used here the same typeface, which I think is Neue Haas Grotesque Display, I think, um, for the title of this product. So it's very uh, simple, modernist, which gives it a more a premium feel. These aren't the cheapest products. And that is one way we've expanded the system. So we've used the yellow and then just black and white, and we've, we've taken the symbol and used patination, which also expresses something about uh, their movement, which is, is good that we've got the two aspects of that too. But also you can do things because patterns look nice. So we have that on some of the merch and the packaging, and then we've taken the symbol further on these beer cans. Beer and mental health, who knew, right? These guys are being different, I love that. So the idea is that you share a beer or two, not too many, because that might not be good for your mental health. And here what we've done is exploded the logo. So beer is a bit louder and a bit more fun than biscuits or coffee. So we have exploded the symbol. It's all these different sizes. Some of the clients, customers have read all kinds of meanings into why the circles are different shapes and si different shapes, different sizes, but it's just because it looks good. It was just geometrically and what was pleasing. So that's something you can do. We've exploded the symbol there. And then we've gone a little bit further with also using these shapes as graphical devices. So in the three main brand colors, these shapes can appear as little devices through different compositions. We can also use these shapes, so the circle and the rectangle with these particular proportions as masks to uh, mask out photography and create different compositions. So there's lots of options already developing just from the symbol and the color palette. And we're just using uh, one font at the moment, one typeface in one way. Now, uh, none of these things you may notice so far that I've shown you these applications actually say the word six connections anywhere, but they still look like part of the family. And that's what a good identity design system does. Another thing that I contributed was copywriting. I also work as a brand strategist as well as an identity designer. And so to really express the personality of the band, brand, which was uh, more fun and more um, a little bit more down to earth, uh, we created all these different taglines and words like powered by mates and the joy of six kind of had some fun with it. And the one on the beer cans, a real conversation starter. And this was kind of a, a, a double meaning that this was a, it was a notable conversation starter to have a chat over a beer, but also it started real conversations, honest, not fake conversations between friends that went beyond the surface level and sort of checked in on people and how they were. So checking on your mates. So that was how we extended that. And I found with these headlines, as, as you'll see from the typesetting, that we needed another typeface to carry them rather than just using this uh, modernist grotesque. That was uh, quite, it's clean and maybe a bit clinical, you could say. And we needed something else to carry it that was more of a display face. So I chose this face, which is called HWT Arts, which is about as wacky as I get. I'm pretty traditional when it comes to type, but this is designed by Eric Speakerman, very well-known type designer based in Germany. And that's just a little tip that if you're picking display typefaces, it's best to go with a, a well-known foundry, something that you know is very legit because Display typefaces are traditionally where people just make all kinds of wacky, weird stuff. And sometimes it doesn't have great fundamentals and it can look a bit cheap and not professional. So if you're going to go with something a little bit out of the ordinary, try and go to a reputable type foundry to get it because then you'll know there's a good chance it's pretty solid. If you're not sure what you're looking at, you're a little bit more junior in your typesetting. So this kind of rounded out the system by having a different headline face that we could use. And you can see this in the examples here in advertising, in social graphics and that kind of thing. Now, the important thing finally with identity design systems is you have to test and refine. So it isn't that you proceed linearly through the project, you know, 
designing from the brand brief to a logo and then all the other elements and then the applications on the end. What happens is you get going and the best thing is to try out some applications and try and break it. Try and see where the system doesn't work or fall short. Design a web, maybe not a whole website, but maybe design a hero section for a website. Design a brochure, design some business cards, design some social graphics. Think about the main applications for your client, design those and see if it works. And then where it breaks or where it's limited, go back to your identity design system and see what you need to add and change and, and beef it up and make it strong. And then you can make more applications and go through this iteration a few times until you feel like you've got a a system which is simple enough to be recognizable, but it's flexible enough to be extensible over a number of years and not just a one month launch campaign. So there's much more to be said about identity design, but hopefully that gives you some insight into the process and some approaches that you can take on your next project. Love to hear what you think about it in the comments. And if you like this video, then like it. It helps us to know what kind of videos we should make for you. So. Look forward to chatting to you soon. Happy designing.